Welcome back to Trading with CJ. Today, we are talking about Sundial Growers. I haven't covered this one before. Ticker symbol SNDL. I've recently put out in our Discord uh, a collection of different stocks, and this was the highest voted one. So we're gonna cover it today in this video. If you wanna get involved in our Discord as well, it is completely free. First link in the description below. Now there's been a lot of talk around Sundial Growers as of late. We're gonna go into exactly why that is happening. A bit about this company, its financials, my thoughts, and whether I own this stock or not, and of course some related news as well. So stay tuned for all of this, and if you appreciate this video, please go ahead and smash the like and subscribe to my channel, that really is appreciated. So let's get into it. So Sundial Growers, what do they do? Well, this is a cannabis company, the first one I've ever spoke about on this channel as well. Their customers trust to deliver a variety of high quality products and help make informed decisions. They honor that trust by filling a world-class growing facilities with world-class people, experienced growers, researchers, quality assurance specialists, and more. All experts in the art of science and growing cannabis. So this is a established cannabis company here. Uh, they've got a lot of different things going on. We're gonna cover all of these different things in a minute. They produce high quality pro products for individual controlled modular grow rooms. 470,000 square foot state of the art Health Canada licensed facility. This is where they're growing all of these products. And their manufacturing approach supplements a CBG and data driven consumer centric commercial approach for their portfolio of brands. Now these are their five main brands right here. Okay, they've got Top Leaf, uh, BC Weed Co, Palmento, Grasslands, and Sundial. We're gonna to touch on now what all these five brands do because they all do something very different. So the first one here is Top Leaf. From open skies and ocean grown to dark spaces and hidden places, cannabis continues and connects. That's legacy and we're here to embrace it, live it every single day. Now this comes in a few different formats, flower, pre-roll, vape, and concentrates. This is the most expensive of the bunch. It goes on to say that they want full-bodied cannabis with complex taraprone pro profiles, solid THC potency, and something special that makes you say, wow, the first time you take it. So this is the expensive stuff. This is kind of the strong stuff, okay? The next company here, the next brand is Sundial itself. So Sundial is the experimental cannabis for the modern consumer. Sundial focuses on crafting high quality products for an experience orientated portfolio of whole flower and full spectrum vape, vape and extract. So this is more of like the natural alternative. It comes in a few different formats, flower, pre-roll, vape, oil, and uh, topical. So different, lots of different alternatives here for buying these products. It also says that they believe in health, happiness, and personal well-being. Their cannabis is carefully cultivated for modern consumers, people looking for a natural alternative that fits in today's active, healthy lifestyle. So. That's Sundar right there, a completely different approach from Top Leaf. On to our next one, BC Weed Co. BC Weed Co, legendary BC grown West Coast strains cultivated in small craft batches. This is more of a, another premium kind of product. It has flower, vape, and concentrates. So all of these different products here, you can see they have lots of different strands to them. This one embraces the rich history of the most famous and infamous marijuana in the world. They grow cannabis originally bred in perfect British Columbia soil. So this is more about the history of this. this is more of a stable play that a lot of people will probably know. Then we're going on to our next one. So Palmetto is quality weed, good to go, joints, carts, and bud. This is more of a value option. This is for convenience, pre-rolls, etc. for experienced users that know what they want. They can just come and get this. It's a value product. And the last one here is Grasslands. This one is actually grown in Canada, and they say Grasslands is always greener. With Grasslands, the choices are simple and the prices are fair. Best of all, the grass is good always. Comes in flower, vape, and concentrates. So this is another one of the value options, and it's home grown in Canada. So that's about Sundar Growers right there. They've got lots of different brands, lots of different things going along. You know, a bit of everything, a bit of all different sectors here. The natural option, the expensive option, the premium quality products, and the value and convenience options. A little bit of everything. They've also got a focus on inhalables. The core inhalable segment Sundial is focused on represent the vast majority of the Canadian adult market. And you can see here, look, 60% is dry flower, 15% vapes, 12% pre-roll. So they really are getting a good majority of that market. Now we'll look at their strategy going forward here. There's five different steps. They want to deliver leading best-in-class brands that focus on inhalables. We just spoke about the inhalable was a big chunk of the market there for all the different product ranges they're going into. They want to meet involving consumer preferences with agile production footprint they're focusing on the profitability throughout the business cycle they're improving cost discipline maintaining variable structure to adapt to the industry dynamics and lastly they want to reduce leverage improve liquidity and cost 
capital. So that's the uh, well, their strategy going forward. Okay, it's a bit basic. It doesn't give us a huge amount of information. You know, it's good things, but nevertheless, I'd like this to be a little bit more in depth. Get a little bit of a better understanding of what they want to do going forward. Let's look at how this company has been growing through 2020 because they've done lots of good things. Okay, we're going to start from just 2020 here. They launched their vape portfolio in January, so just a year ago. They also have strategic partner status with AGLC. That was in February, March time. They record net revenue of 8.7 million in April. So that's another good thing. They also launched the Palmetto Flower pricing segment, which we just spoke about in June 2020. And then as of about October time, they had a collaboration with Chocolate to launch cannabis infused chocolate bars drink a chocolate and infuse sugar. That's quite a cool idea there. I haven't really seen a company doing anything like that. But yeah, it's a pretty cool idea. They're expanding out into more different segments. So this is like the food kind of sector as well. I wanna point out this market share overview because it has decreased in the last quarter, okay? So we've got here, this is the branded net cannabis sales increased to 77% from 69% in the previous quarter. So overall, the, the sales increased, which is good, okay? And the formats that we spoke about already, flower vape, pre-roll, and CBD oil. If we look at like the national market share here, Western Canada, that was down in Q3, Ontario, Quebec, both of those down as well. Atlanta, Canada was up ever so slightly from 3.9 to 4%, and the national share is also gone down a little bit from 4.7. So maybe they just had a, in terms of the, the national market share, you know, a lot of that was slightly down, but overall the net sales increased uh, to 77%, which is kind of good. So let's have a look at their financials here from Q3. A lot of these were down. The revenue was down 36% from 12.9 million, and the debt principal amount also down 13%. So that's kind of good right there, but the debt's gone down. Uh, they also the adjusted EBITDA also down 13%. And this is a statement here from the CEO. Sundart was a successful emerging player on the verge of profitability with higher quality products at a disciplined corporate focus. The highlights from the Q3 uh, results, 43% increase in gross margin, which is great. Branded sales shift, we spoke about this already, 77% compared to the 69%. They've decreased in cost per gram and they had a decrease in GNA expense as well. Things are looking good, and this one here, 120% increase in sales and marketing expenses. So they have been boosting their marketing for this product, getting this company out there, putting it on the map. Now at the time of recording, this company currently has a market cap of around about 850 million, and they did have a lot of debt okay, on their balance sheet, and they did have not so much cash. That has currently changed, which is great. They're moving in the right direction, okay? The cash on the balance sheet was 60 million, but the debt was 127 million. But I can now tell you that as of December 21st, Sundial announced its completion of financial restructuring and debt-free status. They said that as of today, no debt remains outstanding. All amounts are uh, denominated in Canadian dollars unless otherwise noted. While many cannabis companies experience debt burdens, Sundial is proud to announce that we are now debt free and that's right there is from the ceo in february 2020 the global pandemic was emerging sundial was running out of cash just two quarters after its ipo so i mean that was tough times for them that's for sure and for a combination of asset sales debt for equity swaps capital raises and cash repayments they've now eliminated all of that debt this year so that is good okay they've been raising money they've been getting cash repayments equity swaps, etc the debt has gone so that's not now a concern for this company but however you know they have to keep up the momentum they have to make these sales otherwise they're going to continue to get back into debt a couple of other bits of news about this company before we jump into the share price and exactly whether i own this or whether i'll be buying etc sundar growers announces a hundred million dollars of registered offering. This is big news and this literally just came out today. A unit will be sold at a price of 75 cents per share. And the gross proceeds from this offering are expected to be approximately $100 million. So that is absolutely crazy. 75 cents per share, and they're hoping that this is gonna go through by February the 2nd. So very, very soon until this goes through. Uh, so the 75 cents per share, let's just quickly have a look at this stock price. We're currently trading at this moment in time, 76 cents per share. So it's around about the same price as the share offering. Normally when that happens, you'd expect it to drop off a lot, but this has had a lot of momentum uh, thanks to Reddit, Wall Street Bets, etc., which we will briefly touch on in just a moment. One more bit of news about this company, okay, which could be another great catalyst for this. We spoke about a few other ones on my channel which have similar similar situations, okay. Sundar receives approval for NASDAQ listing, an additional 180-day compliance. So they have been given a 180-day extension where they will need to remain at a minimum of $1 per share for a minimum of 10 consecutive business days before June the 26th to remain on the NASDAQ. So we've got a few months for that. They need to hit that $1 price target for at least 10 consecutive days for the NASDAQ listing, which is normally a good catalyst for these companies because we spoke about this with uh, a few others on my channel as well. They, they're not going to put all their money into this business. They're not going to be raising money to then just get knocked off the NASDAQ. So another good catalyst. On top of the fact that they have now paid off their debt as well. And they have, 
they're improving their products as well. They're growing out their brand, etc. So let's talk about their share price, okay? At the moment, like I said, we're at 76 cents per share. We did see a run-up in the last month of around about 65%. So it's had a very big run-up in the last month. But a lot of that has come from the last couple of days. If we go back to just Wednesday, so two days ago, we are currently sitting up 50%. Most of that momentum, potentially to do with the share offering that has just got announced, okay? Like people are maybe getting the idea that this was happening, etc. So raising money, debt-free, etc. They are potentially buying into the stock. But a lot of this has come from uh, Wall Street bets, etc. and the Reddit community. I think you all know about this with AMC, GameStop, etc. Sundar was another one on that list as well. They have a lot, a lot of short sellers in this company. A lot of people are betting against Sundar growers and the Reddit community, the Wall Street bets, retail investors are trying to, you know, get this stock up, get the price up for this company. So there is that reason that we probably potentially see the run up. We see a very, very big run up uh, just yesterday evening when it went up about 75%. It has since come dropping down. Who knows where this will happen in the next few days. It's very crazy times right now in the market, that's for sure. But Robin Hood restricted trading access on a lot of these companies, okay, including Sundial. So you either have to purchase a minimum amount of shares or you couldn't purchase at all. Something along those lines. It's not just as straightforward as what it was at this moment in time. There's a lot of volume being traded on these companies. So this is definitely something to bear in mind if you're investing into Sundial Growers. Am I an investor into Sundial Growers? No, not right now. I'm not, I'm not actually in this market at the moment, the CBD market, but Sundial Growers, you know, it's one that I've had on my watch list for some time and seeing what's going on, but I'm just not, you know, there's too many short sellers in this company right there. There's too much that is just shooting this price up on the back of nothing. And also this Wall Street Reddit community right now as well, getting onto this one. It's not something I want to be quite involved with just in case, you know, we do see massive pullback. I'm not a financial advisor. You should always do your own research when investing into the stock market. You know, I have a lot of penny stocks. This is another one right here that's on my watch list, but this is not one that I currently own. But I am interested to know if you are invested into Sundial Growers. Let me know in the comments below. What's your price target as well? What are you aiming to get from this company? You know, will it hit the $1 NASDAQ price? That's something that we're going to be watching for sure. And I'll keep you updated if I do end up changing my position, if I do buy this one in the Discord. It is completely free to join. First link in the description below. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. And if you can smash the like and subscribe to my channel, that is of course greatly appreciated. Until next time.